What's going on guys? Back with another Borderlands 2 community patch video and today I figured we could go over how to install various community patch mods. Initially, I decided not to cover this subject, however after a couple requests across various community patch related videos I've made, I came to the decision to cover how you actually install these mods in the first place. First and foremost, Craig aka Shadow Evil's community patch method is only available for the PC version of the game, so if you're on PlayStation or Xbox, you're out of luck. However, gaming PCs are always getting cheaper, so you can always snag one up in the future if you really want to. Second, it's important to mention that both the community patch in general, as well as community patch mods, modify existing weapons in the game. Unlike games like Skyrim or Fallout 4, where you can add external assets to the game on PC, you can't add external assets to Borderlands 2. However, with this said, if you do plan on modding Borderlands 2, I highly recommend that you don't use your legit or main character as some of these mods can overwrite the legit weapons that they are carrying. Your best bet is to either create a new character entirely, or to create a dummy character in Gib Save Editor that you use for community mods. However, with all of this out of the way, let's go ahead and discuss what software you will need to make this work. Obviously, you will need a copy of Borderlands 2, and ideally, you're going to want to have all of the DLC, excluding things like the DLC skins and heads for each character. I would recommend that you wait until a Steam sale goes on to get Borderlands 2, as it's typically heavily discounted at that time. The other thing you will need is a hex editor, which is a program that will allow you to modify your Borderlands 2 executable. The purpose of modifying the executable is to unlock the console so you can run your own custom scripts that modify the guns, weapons, and other items themselves. While this next thing is not absolutely required, I highly recommend that you download the Gibbed Save Editor for Borderlands 2. This program will allow you to add weapons directly to characters. Unfortunately, newer versions of Windows don't tend to work that well with the program due to a conflict with Microsoft's .NET framework. Or at the very least, I have problems on Windows 10, uh, I don't have problems on Windows 7, uh, you may not have those problems though. If you're like me and you're having problems with Windows 10, you can check the Borderlands 2 Community GitHub page, which will be linked in the video description, and you can find some save games made there. Um, I will assume that you probably know how to download saves on PC, but if you don't, simply download the files and be sure to install them in the folder where your Borderlands 2 saves are located. Uh, typically, saved games for most PC titles are located in my documents under my games, and from there, game saves are usually found in the Willow Game folder under save data for Borderlands 2. So ultimately, all you should really need is Borderlands 2 for PC and a hex editor. After that, Gibbed is highly recommended, but optional. Okay, so now I'm going to go over how you do this on a step-by-step -step basis. First, you will need to locate your Borderlands 2 executable file. Make sure you know what hard drive Borderlands 2 is on, and from there, locate your Steam library folder and follow the file path that is being presented on the screen. And just for clarity's sake, this file path is usually Steam library, Steam apps, common, Borderlands 2, binaries, Win32. And once you've located your executable, you're going to copy it and place the copy somewhere else on your computer. The point of copying your executable is if you do manage to screw this entire process up, you can simply just move the copy of the original executable back into that main folder. Once you've created a backup of your Borderlands 2 executable, you will also need to set up the ability to use the console for Borderlands 2 if you have not yet done so. To do this, simply navigate to the following file path shown on the screen and open up defaultinput.ini. Once you've done that, simply look up engine.console and add console key equals tilde right under it. This way, when you hit the tilde on your keyboard, the console should appear while you're in game. Uh, you will need the console to input commands and run custom scripts, and you can do this after or before you've modified your executable, but ultimately you are going to have to do it. Once you've backed up your EXE and you've also set up the console, you're going to mod your original Borderlands 2 executable that's located in Win32. 
Uh, now, this process is a little more involved, so I'm going to go ahead and showcase a demonstration of me doing it in real time. So let's transition to that, and then we will come back for more. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and do this pretty quickly. Uh, so let's just go ahead and do it. Now, you're going to want to go ahead and right click and go to Hex Edit with Hex Workshop. Open this, and you'll get this uh, weird assortment of numbers. Now, what you're going to do, you're going to go to Edit, Find. You're going to want to go to Hex Values, and you're going to want to search for these values. However, remove the spaces. So I have already done that. I can copy this and paste. And you're going to click OK, and it's going to populate this. Now, you're going to want to replace these sequence of numbers with these sequence of numbers. And the only difference is that C0 becomes FF. So find C0 and make it FF. Bam, you're done with that step. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do you're going to want to go to find, you're going to want to go to text string, you're going to want to go to Unicode string, and you're going to want to go to match case. And for this, you're going to type this in all lowercase letters, this is important, and you're going to put say. And you'll see some numbers populate here. Go ahead and click OK, and you'll find this. Now, this will, as I just said, populate the number sequence 7, 3, and this sequence of numbers, and you're going to replace this with all zeros. So go ahead and do that. And you've done that. Now, at this point, all you have to do, go here, click Save. It'll ask you to make a backup. Go ahead and click Yes. And from this point, you have gone ahead and unlocked the console and done all of the hard part of this uh, particular setup, which is mostly just working with the hex editor. All right, guys. So we just got done with the hardest part of this entire setup. Now, if you do check this later on and you are unable to get this to work, I recommend that you install and run a program called the Patcher. This is a program that supposedly will modify your Borderlands 2 EXE and set up the console for you. I must admit that I have not done it this way and can't say whether it works or not. Even still, I recommend that before you use the patcher, make sure you back up your borderlands2.exe and also back up your default input INI file. That way, if the patcher for some reason doesn't work, you can simply recover your original files. Now I know what you're probably thinking. Okay, so I just did all this crap that you told me to do. What do I do now? At this point, you will need some code to execute, and you're going to need to create your own custom patch. All you need to do is create a notepad document on your desktop, open it, and then go to the Borderlands 2 GitHub page and look for something that interests you. Uh, you copy all the code from one mod into that text file, and once you've done that, go ahead and save it. Uh, then you will want to move this file to the following file path on the screen, which is Steam Library, Steam Apps, Common, Borderlands 2, Binaries. Also, I highly recommend that you name this text file something that is easy to remember. You can call it whatever you want, but simple names like Patch or Mods 1 are easy to remember. And once everything is saved in the right place, you can now go ahead and open up Borderlands 2. Once the game is open, make sure to hit the tilde key on your keyboard to make sure that the console is actually working. To actually run a patch, you will need to type the specific command that appears on the screen, uh, which is exec for execute, uh, the name of your text file followed by dot text, where text file name is the name of your text file that you just created. Uh, and you do need to have that text file extension there. If done correctly, it usually doesn't look like anything happens. Uh, you may get a couple of errors, however, ignore these and just go ahead and load a character to see if the changes took. You will know that you did this wrong if you enter the command exe text file name and it gets typed out into the chat, or if the console tells you that the command is unrecognized. For the former issue, this means you probably didn't perform the correct hex edits, and for the latter issue, simply make sure you've typed the command correctly and you have the correct file name. Once everything is correct, 
The command should work and you should get modified weapon stats for various weapons. In general, always try to execute from Borderlands 2's title screen and if that fails, execute from the character select screen. I found in 99% of cases, the community patch and all of the community made mods will work properly this way. At this point, I would say that's all there really is to it. Uh, the mods will stay active until you exit the game and mods will need to be reactivated every time you load the game. To make this process easier, open the console key and hit the up arrow to get the command that you last entered. And provided you set things up correctly, this process should be super fast and you can take the time to further optimize your custom patches if you choose to do so. Uh, basically, what you're doing here is you're creating custom text file patches and using console commands to run these patches to modify existing weapons. The process is fairly easy and harmless. However, there are some things that you do need to be aware of. Community patch mods can delete items that you've spent hours farming for. Uh, these mods aren't tested for bugs or anything like that. So make sure that you use a character that you don't really care about or start a brand new character entirely. If you're really paranoid about losing your precious saves, then I would recommend that you go ahead and locate them in my documents and set them to read only. That way they won't get overwritten if you should happen to open them accidentally with mods installed. Another thing I would recommend would be to read the text descriptions to make sure there are any conflicts with other mods. For example, you probably don't want to create a custom patch that has two mods that replace the Hellfire. Most modders are pretty good about telling you what conflicts there are if there are any, so just be aware of what you're installing. Usually, if you read the descriptions and follow the instructions, most mods should work pretty well. Uh, some mods may require Gibb save editor, however, most don't. Ultimately, once you start to get the hang of creating your own custom patches, this isn't particularly hard. Uh, just be careful to use a dedicated save for mods or you risk losing some of your hard-earned gear. Otherwise, guys, I think that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like and let me know what you think of this tutorial. Otherwise, like this video if you liked it, click the bell to join the notification squad, and as always, take care, and I'll see you all next time.